welcome language learners from all around the globe to Listen Up, the podcast that takes you on a captivating voyage through the English language. Whether you've just started your journey or have been navigating the intricacies of English for some time, this podcast is designed to be your trusty compass, guiding you towards fluency and unlocking the wonders of English. I'm your host, Karen, a passionate traveller and an experienced teacher of English as a second language. Join me as we embark on an exciting expedition filled with British history read by a native speaker. Together, we'll conquer the challenges and celebrate the victories of learning English as a foreign language. Each episode of Listen Up will immerse you in a variety of topics from aspects of British culture, history and literature. We'll explore useful vocabulary that will empower you to communicate confidently in English. If you want to read along with the podcast, head to my website www.onepawinthesand.com slash ESL. The link is in the description. But this podcast isn't just about learning English in isolation. It's about building a community of language learners, supporting one another and fostering a love of the English language. I encourage you to engage with us through my Patreon page where you can connect with fellow learners, ask questions and share your own language journey. So whether you're sipping tea in Tokyo, walking the streets in Sao Paulo or studying in a bustling cafe in Berlin, Listen Up is here to accompany you on your quest for English fluency. Join me as we embark on this transformative expedition where language becomes an adventure and your dreams of effective communication become a reality. Today's episode is called Fuel Protests. In the year 2000, England was gripped by a wave of protests that would come to be known as the Fuel Protests. These protests, primarily driven by the rising cost of fuel, became a symbol of public discontent with the government's taxation policies and their impact on everyday life. The fuel protests of the year 2000 started on this day, 8th of September, and were ignited by the ever-increasing price of petrol and diesel. At the time, fuel costs were reaching unprecedented levels, with prices soaring to around 80 pence per litre, a staggering sum in those days. England, like much of Europe, was grappling with the effects of the global oil price hike, driven by factors such as political instability in oil producing nations and increased demand. So what were the causes of the protests? One, high taxation. One of the main drivers of discontent among the British public was the heavy taxation on fuel. A significant portion of the price per litre was made up of taxes, including the value added tax, VAT, and fuel duties. This coupled with the rising global oil prices led to a situation where ordinary citizens were paying a hefty premium for a basic necessity. Two, impact on daily life. High fuel costs had a profound impact on daily life. Commuters, especially those in rural areas, were hit hard as they relied heavily on their vehicles for work and daily activities. The cost of living also increased as transportation expenses were passed on to consumers in the form of higher prices for goods and services. Three, agricultural distress. Farmers, a significant demographic in rural England, were particularly affected. The high cost of fuel added to their operational expenses, exacerbating the already challenging economic conditions in agriculture. The fuel protests began in earnest in September 2000, when a group called the People's Fuel Lobby organised a convoy of trucks and lorries to block key oil refineries and distribution centres. 
This strategic move disrupted the supply of fuel across the country, leading to widespread panic buying and fuel shortages. The protests quickly gained momentum, with truck drivers, farmers and other concerned citizens joining the movement. Blockades and picket lines became a common sight at petrol stations and refineries, and protesters demanded a reduction in fuel taxes. The Labour government, led by Prime Minister Tony Blair, faced a significant challenge in dealing with the fuel protests. Initially, they adopted a firm stance, refusing to cave into the protesters' demands. The government argued that reducing fuel taxes would undermine public services and lead to budget shortfalls. However, as the protests intensified and the public outcry grew louder, the government eventually decided to offer some concessions. They temporarily reduced fuel duties and agreed to enter into talks with the protest organisers. The fuel protests eventually came to an end as the government made modest concessions and protesters began to disperse. While the reduction in fuel duties were seen as a partial victory for the protesters, they did not fully address the underlying issues of taxation and fuel pricing. The legacy of the fuel protests was multifaceted. On one hand, they highlighted the power of public mobilisation and demonstrated the impact that mass protests could have on government policy. On the other hand, they also raised questions about the sustainability of the British economy and the need for a comprehensive energy policy that could shield citizens from the volatility of global oil markets. While the immediate concessions made by the government provided temporary relief, The protests underscored the need for more enduring solution to the challenges posed by fluctuating fuel prices and the heavy taxation of this essential commodity. In 2023, the cost of fuel has yet again been discussed in England, as petrol reached a record high of £1.50 per litre. This shows that the problems with fuel costs and taxes are still around, and we need to find a better solution for everyone. And that wraps up another episode of Listen Up. I hope you enjoyed learning about my topic today and practicing your English. Remember, the exploration doesn't have to end here. If you have any lingering questions or want to continue the conversation, I've got some great opportunities for you. First off, I offer private lessons for those of you eager to expand your knowledge further, whether it's practicing today's subject or exploring other topics. I'm here to guide you on your English journey. Reach out to me through my website or social media platforms and let's embark on a personalized learning experience together. I have been involved with training people for more than 10 years. I've been teaching English as a second language for over a year in which time I have taught over 500 students, many of whom are regulars. But wait, there's more. If you're a devoted fan of Listen Up and want to show your support, consider joining our Patreon community. Your contribution directly helps us bring you more episodes and maintain the quality of our show. Your support truly means the world to me and we couldn't continue this podcast without you. So whether you choose private lessons or Patreon or both, I look forward to staying connected and exploring the fascinating realms of English as a second language together. Thank you once again for joining us on Listen Up. Until next time, keep practicing.